You're watching Telecom TV from SDN NFE World Congress in The Hague. And I'm joined now by Marcus Hacker, who is founder and managing director of Engena, the next generation enterprise network alliance. Marcus, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Now, Engena was founded in 2016, I believe, as a, an alliance of telecommunications providers. What was the outstanding business issue that, that you felt needed to be addressed by this new alliance? Yeah, talking to many of our enterprise and business customers, you get a very clear answer from them that they're quite dissatisfied with the performance the current networks can deliver to them. And they are dissatisfied with the efficiency of the networks, um, and they're even losing business opportunities and revenues um, because of that insufficient performance. So um, the reason for that one is especially that all of that customers are typically uh -huh. very international. Many of them are really global. So they need really to have a capillarity, meaning their networks needs to be more or less in every place of the world because production sites, sales offices are everywhere, more or less, right? Um, and on the other hand, they are changing very fast. They are restructuring, they are selling off parts of their business, they are acquiring new businesses. And all that changes really requires a change of the network infrastructure as well. And uh, the current networks are neither really global in the way how they can deliver services, nor they are flexible enough to fulfill that customer requirements. So how specifically is Ingena addressing this issue? Yeah, I, the first um, and the most important approach, of course, is the alliance approach, mm -hmm. which uh, builds very much on the paradigm of sharing economy. This means that a number of regionally very strong service providers share their network, and Jenner, as an entity, as a startup company, is turning that regional strong networks into a single software-defined network. And um, th with that approach, of course, you could combine global reach with local care, because still, the customer needs to be served locally because the business sites are in a specific region and it needs a specific regional market understanding, right? So the alliance approach is solving the somewhat contradicting problem of global reach with a local care. And of course, technology plays an important role because what we are really building is a global platform which is much more agile and much easier to, um, to, uh, to deliver services for customers. Um, it means we have a software-defined network completely building on the paradigms of virtualized network functions, which allows an end-to-end -end automation and it's highly flexible and secure in the way how telco services can be delivered. And which service providers have come on board so far? Who have you got as, as your alliance members? So, the founding four members have been, um, and it has been announced at Mobile World Congress last year with Deutsche Telekom covering Germany and Eastern Europe, Centralink for the US, um, Reliance Geo for India, and SK Telecom, SK Broadband for South Korea. Meanwhile, we have attracted many more partners, just to name a few of them, like Telos for Canada, Telstra for Australia, China Unicom in China, Star Hub for Singapore, and I could continue. Now, already more than 20 partners have joined the alliance. And what is it about what you do as an alliance that attracts service providers to think, Yes, this is how we want to offer global SDN services to our customers. Yeah, I think what is most attractive for the service providers is that with the alliance approach, they, they, each of them can solve a problem none of them could have solved themselves. Because with the economy of sharing approach, everybody gets the opportunity to sell global services, consistent global services, to their customers. Now, imagine 20 service providers should build global platforms themselves, right? It would be highly inefficient. And think about the business volume they all would need to attract, to make that commercially available. With a sharing economy approach, of course, they all get that opportunity to serve their customer in the best way, 
and they're supporting themselves and they're using the common platform which Jenner has built for them to really serve that customer and deliver the services they're expecting. And why should they adopt software-defined networks for this? What are the benefits that SDN brings them? Yeah, I think SDN is very crucial um, for, for that approach. Just to mention a few uh, benefits, um, you know, in former times, networks have been built very much around uh, boxes. Now, the software gives you the opportunity to change much faster because it's so much more easy to deploy a new software release or to add new functions to a software than replacing a box with all that logistics and installation which is needed. Or think about if you have a traditional network, it is much more static because you need to program the boxes and you need to do all that configuration. Now, if you work with the software-defined network, you, you can go with a complete automation. You have the different layers of abstractions which allows you to much more in business terms um, define the services and then do more or less automated translation to the network layer as well as to the um, component layer. This includes the virtualized as well as the hardware functions themselves. And also think about the opportunities to have a much more flexible routing because the new policies you can deploy are very easy to more or less um, provision to all that virtualized and physical devices in your networks because it is completely programmable. And is this alliance purely for telecoms providers or is it also applicable to, to other technology companies? So the alliance itself, it is very much around the service providers because they are enabled to serve their customers in a much better way with the corporate networks and IP VPN services with a lot of um, enhanced services. But from an ecosystem point of view, we have tightly integrated a very good set of technology providers in that ecosystem. So our key technology providers are Cisco, now having acquired Viptela, so we're using Cisco and Viptela technology to provide the SD-WAN functionality and a bunch of additional services, especially in the area of security and application performance enhancement via service chaining. And we have another strong partner which helps us with the end-to-end -end orchestration with the upper parts of it, meaning the BSS business support systems and operational support system, which is Comarch, a Polish company, very much specialized in that area. And we are also working tightly together with Equinix, Equinix um, helping us in setting up our infrastructure, so we're using their housing capabilities around the world. And of course, we are leveraging their um, cloud exchange platform to connect to public clouds. You see that um, we are a very much partner-centric approach, not just with the alliance approach and the service providers, but also deeply, tightly integrating technology partners to ensure the best performance end-to-end. -end. Great, and a final question for you, Marcus. Um, What's coming up on your roadmap? What might we expect to see from the Alliance in the next 12 months as we move into 2018? Yeah, you know, we have uh, more or less launched our, our platform. Uh, beginning of July this year, now we are in the phase of deploying the first um, customers on it. So the proof of, co of concept customers are in implementation. So we expect now the real ramp up um, of our business model together with our alliance partners which already have started really selling and you have, uh, may have heard about the first real announcement of alliance partners in promoting um, the services built on, on the Jenna platform. So business really will start uh, beginning of, of next year and of course we are heavily working on extending our service portfolio um, even further towards new security services, uh, towards more and more complex um, access services so that we can really cover all the different business needs around um, the IP VPN. The Jenna company is, uh, itself has grown also very, very quickly. 
we are now already more than 100 people uh, working in our headquarters in, in Frankfurt and in our new Shaw centers in Slovakia and in Hungary. Um, and uh, the ecosystem is much, much bigger, of course. So we are deploying more than 150 engineers with our technology partners. Mm -hmm. So you see there's such a bunch of things uh, which are ahead of us. And uh, I'm really, really looking into seeing a strong growth in 2018 for the Alliance partners and for the General Alliance overall. Marcus, we look forward to it. But for now, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.